Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I'm Brian Zipsy. We're brought to you today by Horse Racing Nation and Derby Horse. As always, I'm joined by my Mr. Breeders' Cup partner, Matt Schiffman. We also have the pleasure of welcoming in and Jason Mangrum hey. from Horse Racing Nation's Capper's Corner. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Thanks for having me, guys. What a great setting standing here in the paddock at Santa Anita in front of Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit behind us. Some of us remember Seabiscuit. Thank you, thank you. We're gonna do a little something different today. We're gonna to talk about the Breeders' Cup. As you can tell, we're live on location at Santa Anita. And Jason, Matt, and I want to talk about some of our favorite bets during the Breeders' Cup. Who wants to go first? Matt. My, the race I'm looking forward to most is on Saturday. I'm really looking forward to the turf sprint. That's not my typical kind of race, but it's a wide open field and there's a couple horses that I really like. That the turf sprint is on the downhill course at Santa Anita, which is a super tricky kind of course to, for horses. You always need to look for horses that have experience on the track and horses that come from behind. That race is setting up for a super fast pace, and I love two horses that ran in the Eddie Delahousse their their last race. That's Am Ambitious Brew and Home Run Kitten, both 12 to 1 in the morning line. I'm going to use them in trifectas with big spreads and look for the big payoff. Don't throw out undrafted, Matt. That's all I'm saying. He'll be in my all sections. Good, good. Jason, you have something for us on Friday? Well, I really like the pick four on Friday, but if I had to pick one race, I actually kind of like Stanwick to hit the board in trifectas or superfectas on the bottom. Stanwick in the distaff. In the distaff. Yeah, in the distaff, excuse me, at 20 to 1 in the morning line. I, I really think that she can inflate the exotic paths. Not many of you know this, but Jason's nickname is Jason Bottoms. He specializes in getting that long shot to finish Thank you, Brian. Thank second, you. third, or fourth <laughs> in the trifectas and superfectas. So if he says Stanwick at 20 to one, you might want to think about throwing him into the bottom of your supers. I'm gonna get us started with the first race of the Breeders' Cup, the Juvenile Turf, and uh, I'm uh, Euro-centric. Unfortunately, I'm looking at the Euros. They've won three straight Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turfs, and I think they're gonna have good success tomorrow to start the, the uh, late pick four, the all Breeders' Cup pick four. I'm looking at three horses. The horse I actually like the best, probably have to be a little bit closer to the pace, is Commemorative. Uh, he's run a series of good miles in Europe, Wet sail uh, should be a longer shot, and I think probably the most likely horse to be first or second, he's going to be running late, is Aiden O'Brien's War Envy, War Envoy, excuse me, War Envy, uh, Envoy I saw this morning, he looked dynamite. Anything else we got on Friday for the folks, guys? Go ahead. I, you know, I just think in that sequence, we've got the Dirt Mile and the Distaff. Both of those races look like they're kind of cut and dry races with two horses in them, but I don't know. There's something inside of me that's saying that. Is the, is the Dirt Mile just gonna be Golden Sense and Tapature? And is the Disc Staff just gonna be Close Hatches and Untappable? I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. Well, if we're talking pick four tomorrow, we started with the Juvenile Turf, I used the Euros. I think the most likely winner out of all 13 races has to be the second uh, leg of that pick four, and that's Golden Sense. He drew the rail, he's the fastest horse in the race, he should get right to the lead, and when Golden Sense gets to the lead, he wins. And also the way the track was playing today, not too much ground was made up in the stretch. So it looks, it, it might not be as speed favoring as last year, no. but it definitely was kind of speed. You know, kind of speed, a little bit speed, uh, but also fair. We saw some horses yeah. rally today, but I think Golden Sense is just too fast for him. I think he's a good single in that pick four. Uh, the Juvenile Phillies, Turf Phillies, pretty wide open. I'm gonna spread it out there, but if I had to throw in two to use the most, I'm gonna look to a European. Oh, Celia. And I also like the American Reina de Batera coming from Keeneland. And then as a bomb, close hatch is sure. She's my top pick on top of Bulls Dangerous. As a bomb in the distaff to close that pick for L'Amour de Ma Vie from Europe. L'Amour what? De Ma Vie. Okay, I got you. I think she has a shot. We oui, we. Oui. How about we go to Saturday? Let's go to Let's Saturday. Go. Saturday Breeders' Cup. We got nine big Breeders' Cup races on Saturday. Starting with the Juvenile Phillies. Any thoughts there? Juvenile Phillies, I like the Mark Cassie horse. All those Conquest horses are really tough. I, you know, she might be favored. I know she's not favored on the morning line. She's working out well. 
She ran well last time over this track, so I think she's gonna be tough. Mark Cassie looking for his first Breeders' Cup victory in many, many drives. I got a couple odds horses in there for you. Top decile, I think, uh, should be close to 10 to one. Al Stahl is very high on her. I think she got a, out of the gate a little slow last time at Keeneland. I expect her to uh, be picking pieces up in that race. And as a, as a real long shot, I like, uh, I like the uh, uh, Hollendorf for Philly. Majestic uh, presence a little bit. She should be 20 to one. She had a wide trip last time. She made a nice middle move. I look for her to make some noise at good odds in the juvenile fillies. Yeah. What else do we have on Saturday? Well, on Saturday with the uh, scratch of American Pharaoh in there who, who was shaping up to be one of the big, biggest favorites uh, of the weekend. It, it seems like we've got, we're down to the two Pletcher horses with Carpe Diem and Daredevil. And my only note on that is that I think uh, a lot of people in the Pletcher camp like Daredevil more than Carpe Diem. That's, and that's Daredevil's the kind of horse, the, Daredevil's the kind of horse on this track that could go to the lead and take off. If you're concerned about the uh, fact that both of his races were on the slop, um, the Pletcher camp isn't concerned about that. They uh, they didn't even want to run him on the slop in his first start, but they needed to run him, and they found out he, he can do it on any surface. They're definitely high on him, both of the Pletcher horses, shipping across country to California, only two races. So if you do like somebody, I don't love anybody in the race per se, but uh, both of the Pletcher horses, I think, are a little bit vulnerable simply be, uh, due to their inexperience coming to California. Jason, what's your uh, what's your play of the day on Saturday? A couple of a couple of things stand out to me in the turf. I really, really like Telescope. Sir Michael Stout. He's won five Breeders' Cup turfs, and he 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 is the American equivalent to Belmont. When he circles a date on the calendar to get a horse ready for a race, he gets them ready. And he's been pointing for this spot for months. So mm -hmm. he he's he's one that I like on Saturday. Another one I like is in the mile. A long shot named Beta, a three-year-old filly. Uh, three-year-old fillies have done very well in this race. Six Perfections comes to mind, winning here as a French three-year-old filly um, under Jerry Bailey. So those are two that I kind of like on Saturday. Don't forget, nice. don't forget, Telescope is getting first-time Lasix also. Yeah, Telescope. Uh, uh, last time he had a uh, field maybe this light, not to discount the turf, but uh, with no monsters, uh, he won off. Uh, good race. I like Hardest Core. The story of Hardest Core a little bit. Main sequence is tough, and of course uh, the French, uh, the French uh, uh, arc runner that ran second last time, Flincher, has to be uh, given a given a shot in there. Yeah, a month ago that field looked like it was going to come up light, and and main sequence was a standout, and now that field has turned into just an absolute monster where main sequence is now kind of up against it. Well, let's not forget though that last year's champion Magician scratch earlier this week, so main sequences task might have got a little easier, but it's still a very deep field. Yep. I think the top four are tough in there. Uh, what else we got Saturday? I, I guess it's time to give my uh, best bet of the whole Breeders' Cup. I'm, I'm thinking she's going to be the, about the third choice, and I'm looking at the Philly and Mare Sprint. I like the uh, winner of the uh, TCA at Keeneland. Her name is Lee Court. She ran off uh, in just effortless fashion. She stalked the lead of Stone Tastic. I think the same scenario might play out. Stone Tastic could be even tougher with less early speed, but Leah Court at seven furlongs I love. I think all of the yeah. uh, other favorites, Artemis Agritera, Sweet Reason, and Judy the Beauty, all have a little bit to say maybe not this time. I love Leah Court. If we can get four to one on her, I'm gonna be uh, going to the windows with both fists. Best bet, anybody, Saturday? I just mentioned them, telescope in the turf. Telescope in the turf? I gave you my uh, turf sprint play. That's that's okay. my big play for the weekend. That's your big one. Okay, I think we, I think we have to talk about yep. one more race on Saturday, and that is, of course, is the um, uh, richest race in America, the Breeders' Cup Classic. It's uh, become a showdown probably for the three-year-old championship, probably for the horse of the year, topped by shared belief, Bayern, California Chrome, the Derby and Preakness winner, and Tonalist, the Belmont winner. Very interesting race, but by no means is this a four-horse race. Who do you guys like? I, I, I agree, you know, all along uh, I had this feeling that a three-year-old wasn't going to win the race. I still have a little bit of that feeling that a three-year-old isn't going to win the race, and if that's the case, I'm going with Zevo. Zevo. Jason? I'm going with the most versatile horse in the race, Tonalist. He can win the Belmont near the lead. He came from dead last in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. He actually had enough early speed to press Bayern in the Travers, and he's coming into the race great. Tunnelist. Yeah. 
And he's, he's run well at different tracks. I, I'm with you, Jason. I think Tunnelist has a big shot in here. I do uh, like three horses, and I think if we go with those three, we're going to find the winner. I'm going to go against the favorites. I, I assume that's going to be Shared Belief and California Chrome. I like Jason's Tunnelist. I'm not on Matt Zevo. I think uh, Santa Anita might not be his track. I like Cigar Street quite a bit. Uh, older horse who was getting really good last winter. He had a lot of time off, but he's rounding into top form. I think he stalks and he pounces on the tiring speed on the turn, and he he might be my top pick. I like Tunnelist a lot, and I want to throw in Candy Boy to rally into the picture. Those are my three in the classic. I could see him being a Jason Bombs play by and by Candy the Boy. end of Saturday. Correct. Yeah, correct. Jason Absolutely. <laughs> All right, it's starting to get dark here on Thursday night. Thank you, as always, for joining Horse Center. You can follow us on Twitter. Horse Racing Nation is HR underscore nation. Follow Derby Wars on Twitter. Thanks for being here. Behind the camera tonight, we had Ember Marr. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Jason. Say goodnight, Ember. Goodnight, Ember.